Cart, you're up first. This is how this works for anyone who's new to the show and missed this last year. Carter, Riley, and myself have each prepared 10 extremely bold, bold predictions for the upcoming college basketball season. Carter will unveil one of his predictions one by one. He will read it. And then Riley and I, or the other two people, if one of us is going, will discuss, will debate how bold it actually is. If the prediction is extremely bold to the point that we think that would be crazy, I'd be shocked if that happens, you get 10 points. If the prediction is not bold at all, if you actually think it's likely to happen, you get one point. It's up to the other two to determine your fate and how many points are on the board. At the end of the season, the player with the most points accumulated from what actually happened will win this season of the Sleepers Podcast Bold Prediction Show. I do feel we didn't do this last year. We need to put some stakes on the line here. We need to have some reason to come back to this regularly throughout the season. So do either of you have any ideas, any proposals, what should be on the line for the winner and the loser between the three of us here? I always look to you for these, for like outcomes and things like that. I just lose. It's only right that it's a Riley Friday. I feel like we should do Riley's will here. Hmm. If you, I like there being the loser has to do some of gr some grueling physical activity. The loser has to purchase an agility ladder and film themselves doing at least six different skills or drills on the uh, agility ladder. Wait, no, no, no. I got it. This is what it is. You purchase an agility ladder. The loser runs a 15-minute IG Live agility ladder session every day on Sleepers, Twitter, or whatever it is, and you just got to do it every morning. Okay, I, I don't dislike that one at all. Can I make a different proposal, though? Yes. What if we just did that, like, have you ever seen, like, the 8642 challenge thing? Mm -hmm. No. It's, like, eight donuts, six pieces of pizza, four something. Here's two beers I thought it was four beers and two something else four beers and two I don't remember exactly what it is we can find it but basically it's like food two miles food. yeah two miles or no you can you can assign them however you want it's donuts yes. donuts beer pizza miles and you have to do eight of one six of one four of one two of one I think it'd be hilarious if one of the three of us had to do that in general Especially with Riley's gastrointestinal issues. <laughs> and my issues with cardio. So, yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, up to you guys. Do you want to do the ladder and the workout on the sleeper's social media? Or do you want to do the 8642 challenge? I'm good with 8642. I'm good with 8642. Okay. Loser of this has to do 8642 challenge. Let me add some spice. Oh, God. At the final four? Do it at the final four? You have to find time at the final four, assuming we're all there, to do the eight six four two. Deal. Okay. All right. What, one of these what, what, what if one of our predictions, predictions won't come true until after the four, season? Ah, uh, then okay, we can't do the final four. We'll figure this out. We'll do it in the summer. We'll set a date. All right. Uh, to Cart. Cart goes first here. Uh, ten bold predictions. Cart, the floor is yours. All right. I got my trusty laptop here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start from the top here. My very first one is that Jackson Shellstad will win Big Ten Player of the Year. Give like a quick one sentence on why you think that, and then we'll elaborate or deliberate. I just Well, for those who don't know, Jackson Shellstad had himself a very nice stretch for year, 45 from the field, 35 from three on very high volume, like four and a half, three-point attempts a game, 10 field goal attempts a game. That was wild playing next to Jermaine Cousard, who is no longer there, unless, God forbidding, I know that he came back. Um, Oregon's going to be really good. He's going to have the sophomore leap. I think that he is an NBA player um, eventually. Um, people think he's like a Peyton Pritchard type at Oregon, but I think that, it, honestly, he's better than Peyton Pritchard. Um, average 12, 3-3 three and three last season. I think a sophomore leap is very much in the cards for him to have a great year at Oregon, and I think he's obviously the guy at Oregon as well. Mm. Okay, my quick thoughts. That would probably require Oregon winning the Big Ten, I think, or at least like being better than Purdue, because like that presumes Shellstad is better than Braden, 
and Oregon's probably better than Purdue. I think both of those are pretty unlikely, but Shellstad is like a possible first team all big tenor. So it's not insane. I don't know, Riley. What do you think? I would, I'd probably give it like a seven because I wouldn't say there's a clear front runner to big 10 player of the year, which does make it bold to just stake your claim with one of them. But I think he's got a good shot to be one of the, the five best players in the league. Okay. I'm good with seven. I do want to make this known. This is a big moment in this exercise. It's the first prediction. And that feels like a generous score. I think in general, may, maybe our panel's leaning generous this year. Maybe. That's an observation. Because if we have a guy who's projected all conference winning player of the year in a wide open race being a seven on the bold scale. Yeah. Maybe we should knock it down a little bit just to set a good precedent. But I like I like generosity if that's the direction we're going. We can move it down to a six. You want to go to a six and be a little less generous? Yeah, let's go down to a six. We're going to go to a six. You get six points for Shellstad player of the year. What's number two? I'll, I'll keep track of, of mine, at least. I'm not going to keep I'm, track. I'm writing everything down on my end, too. Okay, cool. Uh, Louisville will finish top four in the ACC. Ooh. Wow. I think this Louisville team, I actually think they're underrated for the talent they actually have. Kayshawn Pryor is really good. Edwards is good. I think Chucky Hepburn might prove even myself wrong that he's actually a pretty, like, he did win a Big Ten with Wisconsin. You give him that credit whether you want to or not. I think Pat Kelsey's style will also maybe actually maybe even pose some trouble for some ACC teams as well, just the up-tempo and shooting the ball. They got Hadley, uh, Roos. I actually kind of like this Louisville roster more than I thought I did. Um, and I think it, the ACC is kind of wide open. So I didn't want to get fully there and be like, Louisville can win the ACC. Um, that would have probably been an easy 10. But I'm just going to go a little bit safer on this one and say they finished top four. Is it too safe, Riley? That doesn't seem very bold to me. I'd probably would give it like a, a four or five. I think I have Louisville third in my rankings that I did for Heat Check. Um, but I've seen like like Miyakawa's rankings are lower on them, Kim Pom's lower on them, to where I see how it is, you know, a little bit of boldness. I just there it, it's not as bold because like the the bottom of the ACC is really bad, the middle is not great, and definitely they have one of the better rosters, but yeah. I think this is going to happen. The only two that are for sure going to finish ahead of them are North Carolina and Duke. And then you're talking like Miami, Syracuse, Clemson. Wake Forest, Clemson. But like, I, I think Louisville has the best roster of them. So I think this is going to happen. I, I'd be inclined to say like a four max on this one, but this is a smart play from cart because there's a world. If you go too bold, you might get zero points on the year and cart needs to book one. That's likely to happen. I don't know. I'm good with four if you are, Riley. Yeah, four works for me. Now I'm okay. now I'm content to try to change mine and put something obvious in here. Hey, I let's not, yeah, come on now. Let's not do that. You gotta have uh, you gotta have integrity. You can't change it now. Yeah. Three, um three. Okay, this is a three parter. Duke <laughs> wins the ACC regular season and the tournament. They sweep UNC and a Duke player wins ACC player of the year over RJ Davis. All three have to happen. Win the regular season and tournament, mm -hmm. sweep UNC, and a Duke player is player of year. Yes. That's four things. That is four things. That's Sorry, four things. things. All four have to happen. I would like that to be taken into consideration. I mean, there's a lot of ways this could go wrong, Riley. I think we probably got to give him a 10 for this. Yeah, I think a 10 is warranted. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I earned that. That's a good okay. pick, though, because I think that could happen, Card. I like that from you. Okay. Uh, this is probably another 10 one, I must say. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Auburn wins the SEC, and Janai Broom is the SEC Player of the Year. All right, so we're really just looking at Bama and Sears. I mean, mm -hmm. there are a lot of other good teams, but I would assume Sears is kind of Player of the Year, and Bama's the best team. Everybody else is. Maybe or Clayton. Walter Clayton could contend for it. There's a couple – a Tennessee guy, maybe Lanier or Dubar. Is... Yeah, this is the this is the second team picked in the SEC and an All American. Like this isn't that crazy. You just he needs to be better than Sears and he needs to be better than Bama. Five, five or six. I feel like I'm fine. Riley can make the call on this one. I'd say we bump it to six because it's a two parter. It's okay, we can, we can get a six. We can get a six. Oh, you can get a six card. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Uh, next one, Cam Jones is first team All-American. 
he's in the mix. First team All American's tough to me. That's like a a just because it's like this Marquette team kind of stinks, and you have to be a pretty on a pretty good team to make first team All American, unless he scores like thirty a game, which I don't. He scored thirty. He scored thirty five times last year. He had games of thirty nine and five, twenty eight five and five. No Colick. He was seventeen three and two from in the stats, fifty from the field, forty one percent from three in twenty eight minutes a game. So I think he's going to score 20. It just mm-hmm. comes down to, like, what does Marquette do? Right. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably go more like a six for this one because I, I think he's one of the top ten All-American candidates. I think we could split the middle and say seven. Give him seven? Okay. Good with that. Um, right. Give seven. Nah, da, 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 not so fast. What's more unlikely, Cam Jones making first team All American or Jackson Shellstad winning Big Ten Player of the Year? Because so we gave that six points, and that seems a lot more unlikely to me than Cam Jones being one of five All Americans. I think I, I, to answer your question, I think Jackson Shellstad's more unlikely. I think Jones is more unlikely because the Big Ten Player of the Year race seems a lot more open than the first team All American race. That's well, kind of true. Like we, Riley is approaching this from a RJ Davis is for sure here. Mark mm-hmm. Sears is for sure here. Cooper Flag is for sure here. Hunter's for sure there. All There's right. really one spot up for grabs, kind of. Yeah. Okay. All right. We can we can go seven. I'll let okay. this one. What's next? Uh USC finishes top six in the Big Ten. It's a ten for me. I think that team stinks. Hmm. I'm going with 10. Thank you. Can, you. can I get some elaboration from you on that quickly? I like I like hearing the reasoning behind this. Well, just because I think that that roster doesn't stink as much as you're coming across stink. Like, I think St. Thomas is going to be incredible. I think despite – I think Terrence Williams is actually a solid player, um, despite what Michigan people think. Um, and, like, if Claude is good, there are – there's a lot of volatility with that roster. They could finish dead-ass last. It's also a world where like St. Thomas is an all Big Ten player and they find their way to six in a conference that is pretty much open after two, I feel like. So Yeah. Yeah. I've I've grown on this USC team a lot. Me and Ralph did a video for it yesterday to where I think um Desmond Claude could have a little bit of the Jalen Tate type effect under Muss. If you remember Jalen Tate, six six wing from Northern mm-hmm. Kentucky, who Muss made a point guard and took him to the Elite Eight in twenty twenty one. Claude's kind of the same thing. Six six wing who's not really a point guard who's going to try to play point guard. So um I don't know. There's a world. But yeah, I'm I'm fine to give it a 10. Okay. That's a world I don't want to live in. What's number seven? Uh Vlad Golden is first team all big ten. Once again I plead for some reasoning. Sorry about that. I, I I do have reasoning behind that. Um, I think that the the actual big man spot in this is very much open. Vlad Golden is easily a top two, easily top three. You can't go past three big in this conference. And the other bigs ahead of him are going to have other bigs that kind of go against them. Like if they get caught between choosing Umar Balo and Malik Renu, Vlad Golden just finds his way onto that team. I think Vlad Golden might be like the leading scorer rebounder on Michigan's team. Like there's a if he's putting up, let's say, let's say 16 and eight, 16 and nine, and Michigan's actually better than people think, and they might be from reactions taken away from that first game. And Dusty as a coach. I think there's a world where Vlad Golden is the best big in this conference. I love this exercise because we're basically begging Cart to explain why we should give him low points for this prediction and he does a good job convincing and then like oh that's actually pretty reasonable let's give him two points uh but he lost me when he said uh like yeah like balo and renew could split votes from what i saw this week golden and wolf would split votes the same way wolf had a double double while golden was like 13 and 4 or 11 and 4 so i don't know what do you think Riz? i think first team all big 10 seems relatively bold especially like I mean, Dawson Garcia is going to be putting up big numbers, and it seems like the, the folks who vote on that league love him. O- Owen Freeman should take a big leap. There's definitely competition there. Vlad Golden is, as we've coined on this program before, Mr. 17 and 6, and if he puts up those numbers that he did last year, maybe he gets it done, but I'm also kind of a – I would be a little bit inclined to say those those numbers quite aren't matching what he did at FAU. And for that reason, 
I'll give it a seven. Seven. Okay. I'm gonna give it a nine. Can we can we split and call it an Let's eight? Let's go an eight. Let's yeah. go split and call it an eight. Okay, number eight cart. Uh, Yegor Demine wins Big Twelve Player of the Year. <laughs> That's a ten. Yeah, it's a ten. Thank you. Because Yegor yeah. might not even be eligible. Relax. He will be. <laughs> I love uh, Yegor. I want to. I want Yegor to be the Big Twelve Player of the Year. Me too. Uh, Braden Smith has at least three triple doubles this season. Flirted with them all last year. Never actually got one. It was cute when he did the fake get up on the bench. He's going to be the guy. I think it's pretty reasonable. Triple doubles are hard, though, in college. Triple doubles like, are they're, really they're, hard. They're, they're, they're really hard. Like, guys get one and ass gets the shaking. They're not that hard. They are they are hard. They're who recorded one? They're not that hard for guys who do all three of the things. It'd be really shocking if we saw R.J. Davis do that. How, how, many, how many triple doubles, like, did we have last season? Uh, like Zane, 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 I, I think I think Peyton Sanford had one. Xavier Simpson had one. Derek Walton had one. Uh, Denzel had a ton his senior year. Like, did Denzel have a ton of senior? Let's year? let's Google that. But I'm pretty sure it's not. The triple doubles are a lot harder. As you college. mentioned, he was like one rebound away last year with Edie there multiple times. So with Edie there, I, do I think he can get one more rebound without Edie there this year a couple times? Yeah, I do. When's the last time some guy had three triple doubles in college basketball season? This should be at least an eight. I think it's at least an eight. Yeah. Just I I would have had it more like a five for real. I'm looking up. I need to look up Braden's game logs. And I need to look up Denzel's. I got I'm also Denzel. looking at R.J. Davis game logs. See how many times he's got grabbed ten boards because I don't like the disrespect, Greg. <laughs> Because he's at, he has at least two games in his career with double digit rebounds. All right, so he, here are some Braden Smith lines from last year that came close to a triple double: 14, 15, yeah, and eight. Denzel had two triple doubles during his senior year of okay. college. Pretty doable. Uh Braden had 14, 15, and eight, 11, 10, and five rebounds. It's rebounds that killed him. And again, Zach Eady's not here. He had 10, 10, and eight, 11, 11, and eight, 11, 16, and seven. He had 19, 10, and 9. Like, fella, he had 11, 11, and 8 again. He was two rebounds away from a triple-double six times last year. So I think it's got to be an 8 or a 9. Uh, triple-double, you just don't see triple-doubles that often. Oh, man. I think this is going to happen, but that's, I guess this is why it's a great prediction from Cart. He's going to get a lot of points for something I think is likely to happen. I mean, I'll go. Like you, you can call it right. If you think it's a nine, give him nine. I just think it's I'll give you a nine. I'm, I'm feeling generous. Thank wow, you. wow, good. That's a great. That might be a game winning prediction card. I like that. Uh, all right, my last one. Yeah. Uh, Doug McDaniel is at least second team All Big Twelve. And I'm not going to give the reason because I think the reasoning starting to hurt me. I mean, if if he just plays a full season and Kansas State's decent, he probably will be because he he scores that naturally. It's just like, is he going to play a full season or not, or have issues? But he's gonna he like he's a lot, a lot, lot of good teams, them in lot, scoring. There's a lot of good teams and guards in the Big Twelve, though. You got to think about that. Yeah, but second team's just one of the top ten. Like a that's that's a lot that's un, that. that's unreal given the guards in the conference. Like go through it. But they're like. They would give a guy that's a leading scorer on a bad team, second team, over like a second best player on Houston. Would they? Yeah. Okay, but look at it like, yeah. okay, first team is probably what? Caleb Love and LJ Cryer. Then you go to second team, you're going to have the Baylor guards. It's mm-hmm. not positional specific. There could be more. I, can't, I, I really thought that this would give me more. Okay, well, how many points? I'm looking up last year's all Big 12 team. Just to, I'd say four. Four. Yeah, that's sort of where I'm at. Damn. Uh, hold on. Hmm. All Big Twelve. First off, was he was he preseason All Big Twelve? I don't think so. Okay, last last season the All Big Twelve top two teams included Jamal Shedd, Taman Lipsy, Kevin McCuller, Dickinson Disu, Ray J. Dennis, L. J. Cryer, Kashawn Gilbert, Max Acemus, Emmanuel Miller. So positions don't matter at all. They had four point guards on the second team. So he just has to be a top 10 player in the Big 12? Mm-hmm. 
that I think should get me at least six. I think it's a four, Riley. I'm good with a four. I think it's uh, a four. We're going to lock uh, card in at four. Okay. Well, that's all I got. I'm a little, little sad to end on that four, to be honest with you, but – you got some generous points. I thought you did a really good job, Cart, to recap. Uh, Jackson Shellstab, Big Ten Player of the Year, six points. Louisville, top four ACC, four points. Duke wins the ACC regular season and tourney, sweeps UNC, and a Duke player is the player of the year. That should have been 100 points. Auburn wins the SEC. Janai Brooms, SEC Player of the Year, six points. Cam Jones, first team All-American, seven points. USC, top six in the Big Ten, 10 points. Vlad Golden, first team All-Big Ten, eight points. Yegor Demean, Big 12 Player of the Year, 10 points. Braden Smith, three triple doubles this season, nine points. Doug McDaniel, at least second team, All-Big 12, only four points. Good job, Carl.